Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a basket twist S hook. Thanks for watching. Okay everyone, here we are at the workbench. So, the first step in making this basket twist S hook is we're going to need multiple bars to do this. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, you know, you can do it with square bars, you can do it with uh, rectangular stock, you name it. There's a whole menagerie of different things you can do. Uh, you could do a square bar and you could have it twisted first and then put all those together and then make a make a basket twist for a different effect. There's a whole lot of different options that you can do here. But today we're going to just focus on the simplest of them and that's using round rods. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to take a need to make a uneven amount, well, or an even amount, if you will. Amount of rods. Blah, 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 blah. Take two. Okay, everyone. Here we are at the workbench. So, the first step in this basket twist is we're going to need to take and cut ourselves multiple widths of rod. Now, that being said, how much rod to cut to length? I know most of my S-hooks take and require at least 8 inches of material to make the S-hook. But I also know that after we've bundled all these together, we're going to draw out the ends a little bit of the basket twist to turn into the hooks. So I don't need quite 8 inches of material. I'm needing more of about seven inches of material and actually a little less. We're needing about six and a half inches of material for each cut length of rod. The reason why we have to take and have an inch and a half difference is that that will leave me about three quarters of an inch on each end to take and draw out to the full eight inches of rod that we'll need or the total length before we make a hook out of this thing. So the first step in this process is we will cut six bars, or a seventh if you like to do seven or six or five or whatever floats your boat. But we're going to cut six lengths of rod, all at six and a half inches in length. Then we'll bundle them together, give them a little tack weld on the ends, just to get, just to get ourselves set up. If you don't have a welder, you can just wire them with some uh, lacing wire. I do not have lacing wire, otherwise I would show you that method. And I have a welder, so it's just easier for me to tack them up. So I'm going to tack up both ends. And I'm not going to put a lot of weld on this, just enough to tack the ends together. And I'm going to show you a different method of forge welding or fire welding. And then uh, we'll get started. Okay everyone, here we are at the workbench. All I'm doing is stacking up all six rods on top of each other and just going to put and tack weld up the ends. You don't have to get too excessive with it, just make sure it gets tack welded up. So we're at the anvil now and I'm getting ready for my first initial tack. What we're going to do is we're going to give this a little bit of flux at a nice yellow heat. As you can see I got my flux and my hammer at the ready. Anytime that you're doing forge welding, you want to take and make sure that you have everything you need at the ready, especially when you're working with small rods or small di diameter stock to be forge welded. It's imperative that you keep everything as close to your anvil as possible, your heat source, and likewise. Move your anvil closer to your forge if you need to be. So we're getting ready to bring it out here and go for our first initial weld. And here it is. You can see it have that little bit of steam. That's how we know that it's ready. And we're going to just weld this in. There's one bar that didn't quite stick on this end. And I'll take it in for another welding heat. As you can see, I'm just sprinkling the flux on this. You do not have to use a ton of flux to get your forge welds to take. In fact, too much flux can actually prevent a weld from taking. So we're going to come out of the fire again. I'm using a torch on a stand to take and do this with. 
and it's just an easy way of taking and being able to recognize your heat without all the coal and shifting the coal around and whatnot. And it also stops you from sweating so much on a really hot day, just having a small torch flame versus a big forge running. So now we've got that side all bundle welded together. And now we're going to flip it around here. And after I draw it out a little bit more, we will go ahead and flip it around and we'll just do the same to the other end. No real big deal. So bringing it back up to heat. It takes a little bit with the torch because you don't have the closed in nature of a forge fire. But that's okay. We want this to take and have a good localized heat right on the end. And now I'm starting to draw it out a little bit. I will switch to a larger hammer after a little bit, after I get the other end tack welded together and finish drawing it out before we turn it into our hooks. I'm just dressing all sides, making sure everything's consolidated. And as you can see, it's all welded up. So that's one end. Now we're just going to flip it around and we'll do the other one. I'll do this off camera and I'll be right back with y'all at the workbench. Okay everyone, we got both these things done now. As you can see I drew out the ends quite a bit. I actually came up and I heated up about another half inch or so back into the bundle from my original tacks and then forge welded that down as well. I decided I needed the little extra bit of material there for when I go to start to form these hooks. So, now that you're getting to this point, you're saying, okay, well, what's the next process? You may think that it would be advantageous to go ahead and bend the hooks, but it is actually better to go ahead and do the twist first. If you bend the hooks first, and then you go to twist it, then you're dealing with an odd-shaped hook that you have to overcome how you're twisting it and it doesn't really give you a good spot to be able to clamp on and get a really nice twist of this bundle. So the next step in this process is we're going to heat this up in the forge. We're going to get everything really nice and hot in this section and in this area. And then we're going to clamp one end in the vise like usual and we're going to put a wrench on this other side and we're going to twist this bundle up. This bundle already has a little bit of a natural twist to the right so I'm just going to continue to follow with that and then, you know, crank it up a lot tighter. You want to go at least one full revolution with this twist to do a good basket twist. And then you'll see what will happen when we go to actually unveil the actual basket itself. But after we get this portion completely twisted up, then we will go ahead and make our hooks and keeping in mind that we're going to do about a half twist or a 180 degree twist back out with one of the hooks to get to open up the basket. If you're keeping that in mind then that's how then then you will know that okay I'm going to take and untwist this one half turn so that means both hooks need to be formed onto the same end of the bar when you untwist it they end up like an S shape. This is my method. There's other methods out there. You can try what would work well for you. But this is the way that I'm going to be taking you all through the process here. Just do whatever works best for you. Like I said before, not everyone has a torch and that's okay. You can do this in a coal forge, a coke forge. Uh, you can even do it in charcoal, no problem. The main important point, or even gas forge, the main important point is to take and get a good localized heat on the ends and forge weld them down and draw them out. <coughs> so as long as you guys can take and do that, you're pretty much set for the rest of the project. The rest of it's just simply twisting and there's a few other little tweaks and you know bending hooks and whatnots. Anyways, so the next step, we'll go ahead and get this twisted up and then bend our hooks and finish her up. Okay, we've got our bundle nice and hot. We're just going to lock one end in the vise. And then I find it easiest to grip this round bundle with a pair of tongs. So that's what I'm going to do here. 
as you can see, I'm like, oh, well, I need to grab it up on top to get a little better grip and twist it back towards myself, working with that piece of rod that was already twisting in that direction. You're going to see me take maybe another heat or so on this, and I actually probably took two or three heats to tighten the bundle to where I want it. I originally had told you about 360 degrees, and that is about right, but in this video, you know, I forgot to take my own medicine, I guess, and I actually went a little bit overboard and more than 360 degrees. But this is our first initial twist. We'll go back in the forge here and get it hot again. Here's a few minutes later. We're going to go ahead and bring it out again. And we're just going to continue that twist. Now, I would say I probably tighten this up maybe uh, 360 plus another turn. Like at least another half turn, half to three quarters of a turn. It was kind of hard to gauge it considering it's on a round surface. The main thing that you want to do is you want to get your twisted rods to start laying down more horizontally or contrary to the length of the piece of original parent bar stock. This helps when you untwist for them to pucker out and open up into the basket. If you did not twist it further enough when you first started the twist, you won't have much of a basket when you're done. The bars will lay flat against the stock and they won't really bulge out like in a classic basket twist. Consequently, this could be a very interesting element all in of itself to make a hook out of even without opening up the basket. So this is just another potential variation of an S-hook that you can do. So we'll take another heat on this here. And before we take and open up the basket, we are going to go ahead and bend both of our hook ends. As you can see, I've already got one done, and I'm going to bend this other one. Reason for this being is after that, that basket's going to be our last part, because the basket can't take the stock cross-section changes as well as what it can right now. So you want that to be your last little bit. If you'll also notice, because of my over-twisting, I had to form the S-hook like an S-hook. So this way I could still accomplish the same effect, considering I went over 360 degrees. If you just do 360 degrees, you will be able to open it out 180, or back turn it 180, and it will come out fine. This particular thing, like I said, I had to untwist it a full 360, considering I went over 360 to begin with, to get my basket to shape out right. Take your time, make sure your heat's good and even, and then get everything kind of squared up. The next thing you're going to see me do here in just a second, I'm just kind of adjusting things with the basket. There's not too many basket twists that get made that are perfectly open the first time out the gate, or at least not for me. So I always have to take and adjust the individual tines of the basket and tweak them to make them look really nice. This will essentially finish up the basket, and all you have to do is wire wheel it from here and just adjust the tines to where everything looks even with equal spacing in between everything. There's a whole lot of room for improvement in this considering this is the first twisted or first basket twisted S-hook I have done in quite some time. So it's kind of funny when you shoot YouTube videos on a process like this of trying to make them perfect for the camera when you haven't when you've been out of practice on this particular style for a long time it's probably been at least three years since my last basket twist but as you can see it came out pretty neat I will put a photo at the end of this video here for you guys to take and look at and see the final result with it all wire wheeled up I thank you all for watching God bless you and let me know what you think in the comments we'll catch you on the next one.